A lot of the information that you see online about SEO and long tail keywords aren't 100% correct. And in this video, I'm going to go over how you find those keywords and what a long tail keyword actually is. If you're new to this channel, my name is George McConnell and I made over a million dollars on Etsy last year. So what is SEO? SEO is search engine optimization. And it's how a consumer goes online and searches using keywords to find your listing. So they're all in underneath one umbrella. Whereas a lot of people think SEO and long tail keywords are completely different. They're not. Long tail keywords is how a person is searching to find you. SEO is the search engine optimization, what keywords you're using to be able to find your listing. Now, what's the difference between a keyword and a long tail keyword? A keyword is only one word. A long tail keyword is a phrase or sentence. It's multiple keywords together. It's allowing a consumer to type in something to find that product specifically. So instead of say shirt, they may look up golden retriever shirts. That is a long tail keyword. Now you may be asking yourself, why is this important? And the importance of this is because how we search online. Nobody just types in one word and expects to find their product that they're looking for. Instead, we want that specific product. So we type in specific words, keywords, in order to find that product, which equivalent to a long tail keyword. So in this example, I'm gonna show you how to find different keywords and I'm going to throw us right on Etsy right now so that you can see exactly how those long tail keywords are going to be put in your titles and tags in order for your product to be found. Okay, so I already went ahead and I pulled up Etsy. And as you can see, I'm looking at raccoon shirts for women. Um, don't even ask, my wife is looking for one of these shirts for some odd reason. And while I was searching on Etsy for one, I found the perfect example and shop to show you how keywords work. So uh, as you see, I typed in raccoon shirts for women and this popped up and here's some different shirts. Now, before I even get started, I wanna show you that one of the cool things is um, I use Everbee a lot for looking at keywords and trying to find things, right? And I search up, you know, raccoon shirt. Everbee will pull it up in here telling me how many people are searching that up each and every single month, which is really cool. And this number will change. So already I know 828 monthly searches just for raccoon shirt. Um, raccoon shirt women, only 35. If you probably put four women, that's probably more. But as you can see, I can see it's you know on the rise right now with 828 people searching it up this month alone. Um, so let's get back here. And one of the searches that she was looking at was this guy. Now, this company has only been around for 13 months, not even a whole year so far. And they're bringing in an insane amount of money. And you can tell just by going to the product analysis, I'm gonna move myself down here. And I'm gonna see the total sales. And right here, just that shirt alone is bringing in $37,742 in just the past three months. That is insane. Now, that made me start thinking. Now, I know I'm supposed to be you know, shopping for a shirt for my wife, but I'm like, how are they pulling in those numbers in three months? And as you click on this, you can see which keywords they're using. Now, this is the mistake by a lot of people. Now, you're hearing that you have to type in those full long tail keywords in every single keyword in their tags. So you would technically need to have it say vintage shirt and retro shirt and you know oversized shirt. And what you're doing is you're eliminating you know a lot of the, the tags that you could be creating. Now how they're doing this is they're only putting these one keywords in each and every single tag and they're expecting their consumers to type in those keywords. So for example, raccoon shirt, raccoon, vintage, retro, t-shirt, funny gift for, funny shirt, ugly t-shirt. 
Now, if you also notice, they have a space. See, it says T space shirt. This one says shirt. This one up here, shirts. Okay, that's multiple keywords. Up here on the title, you see it says T dash shirts. T shirt with no space. T, T E E. Now, when a consumer searches and they search up, you know, T shirt. Uh, raccoon t-shirt with a dash this will pop up ugly raccoon t-shirt without a dash and just a space that will pop up and that's because it's pulling it from these different words in your tags as well as your title so the biggest misconception and you know thing that people are saying online is that you have to have all those long tail keywords in every single tag in order to be searched that's not how Etsy works how Etsy works is it pulls those tags from different things in your title or your tags itself, puts them together as one long keyword. Now I'm going to show you another example. Uh, the other day I was actually talking about this Capybara shirt on another video and how they did their keywords is pretty unique, but it's the same concept, right? It's how you're adding it to your tags and how people are searching. So, I'm going to show you just really quick. Um, I'm going to exit out of this. I'm going to open up Everbee and then just do products. So you can see that that one is the top selling. This guy right here, Capybara, is the top selling Capybara uh, shirt. Now, I don't even know if I'm actually saying it correctly. But let's see, Capybara shirt, right? And as I pull this up, it'll pull up all the Capybara shirts. This one here is pulling in the most amount of money at $1,975 each and every single month. Now, the one after that is a raccoon. This one, I don't even know what that one is, but I don't think that's kept bare. The next one after that is $361, right? So why is this $361 and that one's $1,900? Now you could say, oh, well, it's because of the listing age, George, 14 months. That is not correct because this one's 11 months, only bringing in 254. This one right here, 16 months, only bringing in 227. Now, if I were to click on this and show you what the keywords look like, you'll see here it says Capybara, 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 Capybara. I know I sound annoying right now, but do you see how many times it says that in your keyword? It's not going to get the views that you want because uh, the, this. It's horrible. You need to work on the keywords. So clicking on this, watch this one. 57,000 views, right? Look at their keywords. Graphic T shirt. Funny shirts for. Vintage graphic T. Men's, women's, ladies, youth, kids, boys, girl. Silly shirts for. This is how keywords work. And this is how you need to have your tags set up. Because a long tail keyword is taking the different tags or different things inside your title and formulating that one long keyword, that one long sentence. So in this case, if somebody were to type in funny shirts for men or women, this would pop up. If they typed in capybara t-shirt for men, this will pop up. And that's what you need to think about when you're typing in your tags. You're not just gonna type in something that says, you know, shirt, 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 over and over. Because when you type in shirt, 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 it, it's just, you're wasting space in your tags. You can be adding more things like this one, men's, women, ladies. He's covering all that right there. Youth, kids, boys, girl, covering all that right there in just one tag. That's allowing him to use all those 20 characters in that one tag perfectly and all 13 tags emphasizing, making sure that you get as much push towards that one product as possible. So before I get off Etsy, I just want to show you one more thing because you may be wondering, well, where do I get these keywords from or how do I know what people are searching? Um, so I'm just going to do Mother's Day shirt, right? And we'll see here, you know, Everbee comes up again showing you how many people are searching right now. 2,996 monthly searches for Mother's Day shirt. Uh, that's pretty crazy. And it's going to get more as Mother's Day starts approaching. So just keep an eye on that. But I'm going to click on that. And then over here, product analysis. 
this is the analytics of it. So it analyzes all the products on there. Um, right here, you have Google Trends. Now, I don't know if many people know that you have this little option over here, but that links to Google Trends. And I actually use um, Glimpse as well as Google Trends, so it's connected to my Google Trends. And it'll pull, let's only do 30 days. It'll pull everything that somebody's searching right now on Google. Uh, this is, a, you know, I'm using a free version, so you get, you know, 10 searches out of that each and every single month. Uh, you can see what people are actually searching right now on Google uh, that contain, you know, uh, Mother's Day. Now, if you wanted to break it down and go right to Etsy and see what people are searching on Etsy itself, you can also do that right here. Mother's Day 2024, baseball, bear, bestseller, boy mama, comfort colors. So comfort colors is a brand, very huge. Family, for a nurse, for an aunt, for a baby. This right here is amazing just because it links right there. You don't have to try to find it. You don't have to type in Google Trends and type in the keyword. You can literally do that right there. You don't even have to have glimpse. So say if you don't have glimpse, it'll still break it down with the different things on, you know, what related topics, Mother's Day celebration, shirts, t-shirt, gifts, and what they're searching for. So if you don't have Glimpse, that's fine. If you do have Glimpse, it does break it down a little bit more for you. Uh, I just love that it's you know connected to it. Um, but that's one way that you can find additional keywords that may not be in that listing of yours or somebody else's listing. It's always good to see what other ones you have and what other ones you could try to get. And you always wanna have as many you know keywords as possible that somebody's gonna type in. So when you're using Google Trends, which everybody uses Google to search everything, that's how you can stay one ahead of the game on everybody else. So there you have it. It's that simple. I know so many videos make this out to be super complicated, but it really isn't. It's about using those particular keywords to formulate a phrase or a sentence that somebody is going to search for. And using tools like Everbee and Google Trends is a perfect way to find those keywords and get that consumer in front of your product as quick as possible. As usual, if you have any questions, definitely leave them below. And thank you so much for tuning in. Talk to you later.